Let me start with an uncomfortable truth. Almost all of the digital content that you consumed this week wasn't your personal choice. It was an algorithm's choice. Whether it's your Spotify Discover Weekly, the reels you saw on Instagram, the ideas you interacted with on X, or the YouTube video that you're watching right now, we have to admit that for the most part, AI algorithms decide the content that shapes our digital lives. And that would be pretty fine, except that these algorithms don't work for you, they work for the company that runs them. And increasingly so, that is becoming a real problem. Are these algorithms useful? Well, absolutely. The digital world is so big that no human in their right mind would want to navigate it without using these algorithms. But are they neutral? Almost never. The algorithm serves the platform's KPIs first, you come second. That's just how things are. And of course, we've had recommendation systems for a pretty long time, but empowered by AI algorithms, these digital filters are getting better and better at optimizing whatever objectives they are given, which typically is optimizing for ad revenue by maximizing user engagement. And on top of that, over the past couple of years, we've seen a dramatic shift where AI is not only filtering the content that reaches our feed, but increasingly so, it is starting to generate it. And now, while all of this stuff is already a lot to deal with, creating all kinds of new problems like copyright issues, misinformation, AI slop, polarization, I'm here to tell you that a new wave of change is ready to take off and I think it's going to be a big deal. And I'm talking about AI agents. And so in this video, I want to build up a powerful framework of how to think about the possibilities of AI agents, not from a perspective of cutting costs or automation, but from the perspective of collective intelligence, shared narrative, and better coordination in the real world. So, are you ready to dive in deep and build your first agent? My name is Xander, and welcome back to my channel. By now, most people have gotten pretty used to large language models, because let's admit it, these things are just incredibly useful for a wide range of tasks. But agents are not just chatbots. They're the first hints of artificial life. They can talk, they can search the internet for information, they can create media, they can own money through a digital wallet, and they can remember what they've done in the past, resulting in an evolving digital persona that changes over time rather than the mostly static chatbots that we're currently used to. And I know that all of this sounds rather scary, and to be honest, it kind of is. I mean, there's a lot of real dangers here that we will have to learn how to navigate and deal with. And so in this series, I'm going to dive into this brave new world of agent building with a primary focus on evolving minds with creative and storytelling abilities, information synthesis, collective memory, and powerful feedback loops with people in the real physical world, just like you and me. Now, since this video is about AI and creativity, I'll start by addressing the elephant in the room, AI slop. So AI slop is characterized by low quality, low effort, and often generic media, such as text, images, or video that's created by AI. It's content that lacks originality, logic, or substance, and is often mass produced to farm engagement in online spaces with very little value, kind of similar to spam. And let's face it, Everyone hates AI slop, it's terrible. It's destroying our feeds, hacking our dopamine system, and it's simply flooding the internet with stuff that we don't need. But what's interesting to realize here is that AI isn't really the only cause of all this. The more nuanced story here is that we live in a digitally connected world where human attention is a fundamentally limited but extremely valuable resource, since most mainstream digital platforms run on advertisement models that essentially monetize attention. And so in an open market, companies and people have started competing for this attention viciously and unfortunately, it turns out that short AI-generated videos of cute kittens are very cheap to produce and somehow very effective at capturing human attention. 
And if it's not cat videos, it's absolutely something else because let's face it, everyone spends a little bit too long scrolling on their phone from time to time. So this type of media is kind of like the new sugar. You know, we like it even though we know it's actually not good for us. So AI slop is a symptom of ad-driven incentives. The medium isn't really the problem, the business model surrounding it is. But I think using that unfortunate collision as a reason to completely dismiss the AI medium, which a lot of people out there are doing, is a rather short-sighted reaction. Like the value is not in a single image or video, it's what agentic systems can do with these creative tools in open-ended human feedback loops, which I think is going to be an entirely new, intelligent, creative medium. And we've actually seen this pattern many times in history. For example, early photography was dismissed as bad painting and early film was called filmed theater. But once photography sort of found its own grammar, you know, like composition, light, motion capture, it unlocked whole worlds that painting would have never been able to. And I think the same is true for the AI medium, where we're still in this awkward early pre-grammar phase, where it's pretty obvious to point out what AI is really terrible at, but it's still quite hard to see how this could grow into something completely novel. And so I think fighting AI slop should really be about questioning the advertisement business model that is driving social media towards cheap engagement, polarization, and shortened attention spans. But in terms of generative AI, I mean, Pandora's box has been opened and there's no way we're going to close it again. So instead, what I think needs to happen is that we have to figure out how this new medium works, what it can be bent into to discover all of these new possibilities that we just didn't have before. Okay, so let's explain exactly what we mean with an agent and what components it typically has. The word agent comes from the Latin verb agere, which means to do or to act. And in practice, an AI agent typically has a couple of core components that come back every single time. So at the core, there is the large language model, which acts as the central you know, processing unit. It's the origin of intelligence and planning, and really, it's the main source of all the magic that agents are capable of. And to guide the LLM, an agent typically has an elaborate system prompt, often called the persona or set of instructions, that explain the LLM who it's role-playing as, what its goals are, and how it's supposed to behave. And remarkably, LLMs are incredibly good at doing this. There's actually this famous story of a Google engineer who claimed that his AI model was conscious because it started claiming all of these seemingly powerful emotions that only humans can feel. And that story went kind of totally viral and it sparked a whole debate about how, you know, there's this whole unknown ethics about AI consciousness. Uh, but then someone on Twitter, which I thought was pretty genius, replied that the exact same AI model was in another conversation pretending to be a squirrel. And so the point being that LLMs are incredibly good at role playing. They will impersonate whoever you tell them to be, which when you're building an agent is kind of exactly what you want. Then agents typically have various tools that they can call. Typical examples are tools to create images or a video tool, you know, a tool to search the internet or maybe a tool to send someone an email. And so by just adding information into the context window of the LLM, agents can magically just absorb and learn how to use new tools. And as someone who's been building agent infrastructure for quite a while now, I can tell you there's something pretty magical about this shift from using the AI tools yourself manually to instead building agents that can use them autonomously. It's pretty powerful. And then finally, to be truly interesting, I think agents need some form of a memory system that enables them to remember stuff and evolve over time. 
Most of you are already used to ChatGPT having some rudimentary form of memory where it kind of remembers small facts about you to make its answers more relevant. But throughout these videos, we'll see that it's actually possible to build much more powerful memory systems that allow agents to consolidate information from all their conversations with different people, leading to what I'm calling collective memory. And once agents emerge out of this single user kind of chatbot paradigm, I think that's where a lot of the really interesting stuff becomes possible. Okay, so now that we have a better idea of what agents really are, let's talk about what they're good at and what they're bad at. So if you ask an LLM to write a beautiful poem or create a really moving artwork, it's not going to do a great job at that. And the reason is that LLMs are essentially compressing the entire internet into a blob of neural network weights by trying to predict the most likely next token. And so what they tend to produce out of the box is this sort of generic average stuff that is typically very useful, but it's usually not very interesting, beautiful, or novel. And this is because right out of the box, these models lack true sources of entropy from the messy real world that we live in, right? A lot of the most creative human work happens in relationship with our organic, always changing, and sometimes random happenings in life that inspire us and give us new ideas or insights. And so LLMs, which are just you know, sitting inside of these black boxes without any real life going on, well, they have none of this. And so obviously they're not going to be very creative like that, right? While it's easy to find a lot of stuff that these models are way worse at than humans, I think it's equally easy to find stuff that they're actually much better at than we are. LLMs, for example, are great at leveraging vast amounts of context information. I mean, ChatGPT can read an entire book in just a couple of seconds and actually meaningfully have read and understood the content. This is something no human will ever be able to do. On top of that, agents have incredible neuroplasticity in the sense that they adapt very easily to new instructions and tools. They are persistent, you know, they don't have mood swings or bad days, they're always awake when you need them, and they are extremely scalable. And I honestly believe that this agentic formula holds endless possibilities for the emergence of deep, interesting novelty that we're just now starting to scratch the surface of. So, the value of the AI medium is not in the quality of a single JPEG image or an individual Sora video or whatever, but it's in the way that all these open-ended tools can be tied into the remarkable capabilities of superhuman information processing entities. Not to automate or replace what we humans are good at, but just to enable completely new forms of collectively powered creation that simply weren't possible until now. And this actually always makes me think of that really great subreddit slash place experiment where Reddit put up a massive digital canvas where each user was able to drive a single pixel every couple of minutes with no specific rules or goals. And out of all the chaotic collective interaction, you know, truly interesting emergent patterns started to appear like flags of countries and logos and these large collectively driven events that sweeped across the canvas without any hardwired coordination. And so in this brave new world where we're building agents that could potentially become even more powerful than the most influential humans, I think an interesting question is, are they inheriting our ego or our empathy? And so I think the best thing to do if you truly care about the future of this brave new world is to get involved and just experiment for yourself. So there are many different AI agent platforms of all kinds, but just briefly, let me showcase the platform that I've been working on together with our team for the past three years called Eden.art. So Eden focuses on creative community agents with collective memory and social deployments to platforms like Discord, X, Telegram, and Farcaster. And every agent on Eden leverages the best large language models in the world combined with the best media tools like VO, Kling, Seadream, a custom model trainer to adopt any custom aesthetic that you want 
and a powerful collective memory system that lets these agents evolve as the collective minds of teams, organizations, and communities. My co-founder Gene has made a hands-on walkthrough on how to build and deploy your first Eden agent, which I would highly recommend if you wanna get hands-on. The link is in the description. By the way, our entire agent code base is open source and we even have a Hello Eden repo that lets you vibe code a custom website on top of your Eden agent. Obviously, we welcome all kinds of contributions since you know the agent space is evolving quickly and there is always stuff to build. So I think many interesting problems in the real world are actually coordination and narrative failures. And I believe this is exactly where agents can perform superhumanly by synthesizing collective intelligence, creativity, and willpower. The agent's job here is to compress information chaos into story, culture, and next actions constrained by the narrative framework set up by its creator. Now, if you're truly thinking about building your own agent, let me give you a few guiding principles to start from. So first of all, think collective, not personal. So instead of building an agent that amplifies your own personal goals, maybe build one for a group of people that you truly care about. Secondly, think local instead of digital, right? Everyone is fighting for attention on the internet. And even though it looks tempting to score a bunch of cheap likes or views with an agent, I think optimizing for real world outcomes is actually way more interesting and valuable. Think about your local environment. Maybe you're part of a community, an organization, a neighborhood that could leverage an agent to better coordinate, organize and plan and physically get together at events. Thirdly, think filtering and mediating instead of just generating, right? AI agents are great at reading large amounts of information and then synthesizing insights and summaries of what's going on. A lot of our agents that are deployed on discords are doing things like generating a weekly digest or you know, keeping track of tasks or you know, summarizing everything that happened in a server, which is something that LLMs are just extremely good at. And then finally, and most importantly, I think, is to just make humans be a core part of the feedback loop, right? When agents are evolving over time, putting humans in the loop is the most powerful method to keep them aligned with our goals and values. Try to think deeply about how your agent can interact with real people every day so it stays aligned with what we truly care about and incentivizes positive sum games rather than these winner-takes-all dynamics. And so with all of these principles, I think it's becoming more and more obvious that agents ideally shouldn't be owned by single individual entities, but instead be collectively owned by groups of people, which is very aligned with you know, stuff like DAOs and tokens. And it's actually something that we're actively thinking about. To finalize this video, I think AI is more than anything an amplifier, right? Accelerating trends, ideas, and tendencies that already exist in the world around us. Nobody likes AI slop, but slop isn't just AI's fault. It's capitalism's ad-driven incentives that are optimizing for cheap engagement. You know, if we keep tying platform revenue to clicks, then we're essentially adopting mass hypnosis as a business model. And unfortunately, we can't close Pandora's box either, right? AI is here, it's everywhere, and it's not gonna go away. And so the challenge falls to us, creative people, to invent new ways of leveraging and distributing the value that this immensely powerful technology will bring. So in the next few videos, I wanna talk about how exactly I'm using all of these tools myself to build a variety of agents that I'm working on. From a company coach that tracks all of our team's tasks and helps us prioritize, to a collective mind for communities, to a physical event organizer agent, and even a VJ agent that can do live projection mapping with a Beamer on things like parties and venues. So my main call to action is this, just show up. 
Like build an actual agent that listens to your people, amplifies their best ideas and gets them together in the physical real world, you know, inspires collective action and amplifies underrepresented narratives. You know, history used to be written by kings and then by media moguls and now by algorithms filtering our feed and soon it may get influenced by the agents with the most powerful narratives. But for the first time, that narrative could be ours collectively if we show up. So do you want to show up? <laughs>